a guy who I don't know if he's fine after this docu series has come out as Vince McMahon. Yeah, a a lot of interesting historical stuff in this, but a lot of bizarre stuff in there too. Yeah, and and Phil, I know you got to to see everything so far. What has stood out to you in the Mr. McMahon docu series on Netflix? So. I mean, I, I agree with what you just said. A lot of it is just weird, uh, but you're you're right. The first thing I took away from the the especially the first few episodes was just the way he got started, the way he built the company, the way he did certain things to form an entertainment versus just another professional wrestling event or or pro wrestling on TV. He really made this production, and you know, if so, if you watch it from the perspective of like, how do you build a company? Like, wow, he did. A, I think he did an amazing job and they they portray that pretty well but when you get into the personal lives and the the interactions behind the scenes of people it's like oh that's that's not good um i you know and and what intent did the documentary documentarians go into with making this because as they're filming things and putting things together things are revealed about mr mcmahon so uh, you know, did they change course or was this sort of their intent all along of trying to showcase Mr. McMahon as the character, Mr. McMahon, more than he is Vince McMahon? Um, I thought the last episode actually addressed a little bit of that um, because they asked Bruce Pritchard on camera, you know, what did you think of this, what you saw so far of our documentary? And he was like, I think it was a hit piece. I think you were targeting Mr. McMahon. You were portraying him in this other way and you forget the human being. You forget all these other things. And it's like, but you can't get rid of the horrible accusations that are out there yeah and 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 it i remember i remember when the accusations came out i um maybe i shouldn't say it was with i was with some other wrestlers and we uh there was sort of just general hubbub about it i was like well let me actually look at this lawsuit and i downloaded the lawsuit and i'm reading it and i'm like oh oh, oh it's horrible oh, it's horrible yeah it's and the 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 actual copies of text messages that are i mean it's graphic it's it's yes. insane and even before it got released, like who were some of the possible participants and things, um, allegedly, um, it, we, like we're reading it and going, oh, it was that person. Oh, my goodness. Like, it, so it's it, it's quite shocking um, at the same time, then to really have those moments and times where you're watching the documentary and you're like, oh, I remember when that happened. And I don't re I didn't know that there was another this uh, this lawsuit that they were trying to really hit up and talk about in this skit and that's why they did this maybe this vignette behind the scenes to try to like jab their thumb um in the eye of somebody who was who they felt was targeting them um but it also caught me in how uh how in my brain when we do you know let's talk about this upcoming pay-per-view who's going to win and lose how much of that format in my brain is set for what was established in the early days of the WWE, like, oh, well, they did wrong, so then they're going to get punished, and this is the way they're going to do it, because that's sort of how it was formatted. Um, and they talk about a lot of that, and it's like, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Um, and I feel, uh, unfortunately, I feel like they could have dug a deeper hole. Um, I will say that there's timeline things that don't make sense. Um, they, they get a little bit creative. You know, the, the biggest example I could think of that everybody will probably know about is when Vince McMahon bought WCW. All the conversation was about how nobody knew until Vince McMahon showed up on the screen that he had bought WCW. I'm like, everybody knew. That's why everybody yeah. watched. Like, that's why people didn't show up at Nitro that night because they're like, well, I know I'm not going to have a job tomorrow. Like, and so they didn't even show up for the, for the filming. So, um, so I think that, you know, they were also a little bit creative about telling some of the stories they told too, which then slants again, you know, well, what was the direction and intent of the documentary you know was it to showcase this life of vince mcmahon or was it to go look at this this evil bastard and on on the alleged things he's done yeah and there's you know there's a lot of historical perspective about you know as you go on through this thing but man there's just some things that shake you up like the story about shane mcmahon where he got in an argument with with vince and mm -hmm. it's like stab me you know and pulls gets a, gets a knife that he was eating there like you believe in this stab me i mean you're telling your son to stab you yeah i yeah. mean holy and, it's, and that story is also told by paul Heyman, and, and like and paul Heyman has a delivery mechanism of his own and so there is part of that too is and and vince says it that himself i'm gonna let you see what i want you to see of me and so to show 
case some of the answers she's giving in, in 2021 before the accusations come out and you're showcasing it there in, in conjunction with those accusations, it does make you go a little bit of, well, you know, is he trying to then portray, is he trying to portray the character of Mr. McMahon while he's sharing some things with you? Because I, I can't remember what it was he talked about. It was either in episode one or two where he's like, well, no, and I'm not going to tell you what the answer is because it's this, because I want you to know this. And so he's, you know, he st was still protective of some information. I thought it was revealing. I thought the things he did share were very, um, we're just, you know, very truthful about himself in many, many ways or things that we didn't know about. But there were there were things I remember in some articles about him where he talked about how he had a Harvard education, for example. And that's come to question. Um, that has been called into question. Did he really go? Um, but that wasn't part of the documentary. And, you know, so I know there's been things like that that have been brought up in the past that they didn't talk about. Um, and so, you know, I, I again, what was the intent? Was it really supposed to be this historical documentary or was it really supposed to be let's talk about mr Mc, mr mcmahon and they you know the when i keep re referencing mr mcmahon not only is it the title of the show they keep saying mr mcmahon is the character and vince mcmahon is the person and where do they cross and that's the question that you're supposed to have as you watch it now yeah, and it seems like they did a pretty good job kind of holding that line there and you know, i i i love to hear about you know the relationships that he had with certain people and you know the yeah, but I brought I brought up Shane that you know that story because the the relationship with Vince and the rest of the family is probably the most some of those fascinating stuff that I would love to hear more about because you know Shane left for a while he didn't want any part of this and you know towards the end when the lawsuits are coming out before that he was like you know this has got to stop I mean you know and, and you know how Stephanie's relationship yeah played out in all of this. And I, I can only imagine what the what that life was like. And, you know, we all know that the, the marriage is kind of a sham. So it, the the dude is an interesting person. Yeah. He's an incredible businessman. But, boy, I mean, you got to wonder. They they what I, what I didn't like some about because, again, the main focus is Vince McMahon. And, and though I will say the first two episodes, I thought it was also like, is this also a Hulk Hogan biopic? Like <laughs> there was a lot of focus on him. Um, but when they talk about Shane, especially in those last couple of episodes and well, he left, it almost makes it sound like he just left and he was destitute and like, didn't do anything. I'm like, he started like the largest internet media company in China. Like, like yeah. he was, he was doing other things and he's fine. Like, um, and, and, and so you, and of, and of course, you know, the, they talked about that they had hundreds of hours of footage that they had to roll into seven episodes. Yeah. That's tough. That's tough. And real fast. Uh, Kesselar Daniel Garcia says, Glad the documentary does not expose way too much. Yeah, too much, not enough time, baby. Right. Not enough time. Hi, pro wrestling fans. Marco here. I'd really appreciate it if you would take a moment to join the Marco Show family and please click on the subscribe button below. Also, please stick around and check out the incredible sponsor of this video. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you again on the Marco Show YouTube channel. Looking for high-quality custom screen printing in Las Vegas? Look no further than Off-Grid Creations. Need a few custom t-shirts for a local event, band merchandise, or family reunion? We've got you covered. Large order of uniforms for your staff, sports team, or club? We can handle that, too. Our experienced team will work closely with you throughout the entire process from design consultation to final product. Call us at 661-300-1115. That's 661-300-1115. Or visit our website at off-gridcreations.com. Get a free consult. Consultation today.